Hey everybody, so Shahid requested a video today and I've been meaning to make this one and so I wanted to get it out to you guys today but this is on my specific trade plan and when I was going through this and putting the video together it actually made me think um, about a couple things I want to share with you all and ways to help be more consistent with whatever day trading setup that you're putting together. <clears throat> so. The trade plan is exactly this. I literally wrote it down on paper, and that's going to be the first thing I want to share is I want all of you to write it out step by step in such a way that you you qualify the dollar amounts, the stop loss, the entry points exactly so that you could check it each day and you can tell yourself, did I fail on following my plan today or did I pass? How did things go? So write it out. Mine is <clears throat> actually only six steps. And so number one, and I'm actually going to just draw a few lines here so that it's easy for you to see and easy to lay out. Now, I am sharing this with you all, but I don't want you to just take this at face value and then just immediately use it. I want you to make sure you back test things, make sure it fits your time constraints for how you're trading during the day, but don't take this as I'm telling you what to do. This is just what I'm doing, and I'm trying to show you how you can write out a trade plan so that you can be really consistent. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Step number one, enter short five cents below the low of the final 15 minute candle of the pre-market. So we're on the 15 minute time frame. This is the last 15 minute candle. Here's the low, so we gotta go five cents below that. So the low is 75.14, so that means 75.09 which is gonna be right there. So that would be the entry point, that's step one. Step two is place the stop loss 0 0.05 cents above the high of the last 15 minute candle of the pre-market. So right here, the high is 76, so that means 76.05, right there, that's the stop loss. So this is the risk. This is the stop loss amount. This is how I'm going to calculate my shares. So the difference between here and here, which we'll do the uh, the quick calculation here. So if I hover this candle, you'll see <clears throat> that the let me grab the calculator. So the high was 76.05, and then if I subtract the low, which is 75.09. That gives us 96 cents between here and here. And I'm just gonna to try to make this super clean and super easy to see. So right here we'll say 0 0.96 cents for the stop loss. All right, so that's the stop loss. So I'm risking $300 on this trade. So what I did was I took $300 and I divided it by 0.96 which is 312.5. So this would roughly be about 300 and 312 shares. So let's do this. Let's say 312 share short position. Okay, so we've got it all set up. Now, once the trade's on and we've got the stop in place, I'm waiting for this to move one R. If it moves one R, I move my stop to break even. Okay, so one R would be 96 cents. So my entry on this was at 75.09. And what I wanna do is I wanna subtract 96 cents. So 74.13 would be telling me to move to break even. So let me get my line back up here. So I said 74.13 is right there, and I'll make this one, let's make it, uh, maybe make it blue or something here so you can see a difference, Pur purple. Okay, so this tells me that price action has now hit this level. It's time to move to break even. So now I would move my stop from here to here. And then 
leaving it to run for the rest of the day. Now, that was, let me actually read step three of my trade plan. Step three is, once the trade moves one R, move the stop to break even and don't do it prior. And here's the mistake I made today. I moved my stop to break even prior to it hitting one R. One R based off of this. And guess what happened? Let me show you exactly what happened today. That little wick took me out of the trade. So I got stopped and then it rolled downhill the rest of the day. So missed uh, a big opportunity today because I didn't have a defined exact trade plan. So step four, let the trade run for the remainder of the day, the whole day, that's step four. Then step five comes in as an exception. You can take a quarter of the position off as profit if the trade moves 3R or more. So let me take 96 cents times three is $2.88. So the low off here was our 75.09 and minus three dollars, oh, whoops, uh, let's see, 96 times three, 288, okay. So the low was 75.09 minus $2.88. So if we hit 72.21, I could take a quarter position off. So let me go ahead and duplicate this, and we're gonna move it down to 72.21. Right about there. Okay, so if the trade would've hit this level, and I'll change this color just to make it a little, ah. let's edit and let's go ahead and make this uh, green. Okay, so if the green line gets hit, then I can take a quarter position off. But if it doesn't hit that point, I cannot, okay? So I can take a quarter position off if the trade moves three R or more, and then the remainder of the trade position runs for the rest of the day. And I look to close it in the last 15 minutes of the day. Step six, do this for 30 consecutive trading days and score myself, okay? And I'm gonna be holding myself accountable but being, I'm going to hold myself accountable by reporting to you guys every day if I followed every exact piece of my trading plan because today it cost me a little over 2R. This would have been an amazing, um, it finished, it pushed down at the end of the day and uh, I think went a little over 2R profit based on this candle here. So a mistake because of inconsistencies and one thing I will show you guys here in a minute is when I back test, you know, there is a lot of whippiness and I know we'll go two, three days in a row and just take little one R losers or break even or whatever. And I know that gets frustrating, but when I go back through the month and say I dissect the month of May or the month of April, I'll do that real quick in a second. But I go through and I look for what I call the monsters of the month, monsters of the month club. Um, what I look for is a day where it worked perfectly, the trade ran all day, and it was a monster trade. Monster trades are usually in excess of four or five R beyond that. Those monster days during the month, they make your month. If you catch two monsters during the month, and then you break even and lose and take small profits on the rest of the days, you'll typically come ahead, come out ahead green. And the thing that's been really hard for me is I haven't been consistent. I've been tweaking little things and trying to, to make things better and things are getting better. But now that I've sort of defined what I'm doing, I need to commit to it for 30 straight trading days without a single deviation, not a single deviation. And that's where I'm going to ask for your help um, holding me accountable when we're in the Slack channel and when I post my trades. So I'm going to post 30 straight trades to you all explaining what, you know, my entry, my stop loss, why I moved my stop. And if any of you catch something that looks weird, ask me about it. Um, because my goal is to try to go 30 consecutive days, 100% without breaking this trade plan so that I can truly see the profitability behind snagging those monsters. Um, the sad thing is, if I go back a few days, because I was tweaking and messing around with things, and let me 
sort this out right. I actually missed a monster. <laughs> I missed this day. So I was trying a couple of new things, trying to figure out how to make the, the trade plan better, and I actually missed this monster day. This was a, a big day. So, you know, one day like this can, you know, is really going to make up, you know, maybe half of your month. And that's all it takes is just a couple of, you know, good trades that you let run all day. But the thing is, you got to, you got to know when you're going to take them off and when you're going to be stopped out and how you're going to protect yourself. And I think the defensive part of this strategy is getting to break even once you see one R. If you can get to break even after one R and then just sit tight, it's a free trade. Okay. And, and that's how you're going to protect capital when things get whippy. You get a nice move down. You move to break even, and then it just rejects you and it blows you out. You you leave with a scratch. It's fine. The key is protecting capital when you can, and then taking your quick stops for one R when it goes against you, when it hasn't gone one R. And then when you catch days like this, that's when you're bringing your money in, but you don't want to cut yourself off short. You know, imagine if you got this one big bar, and then on this candle, it started to push up and you took your profits. Or... It pushed down and bounced, and you took your profits here at 77. When in fact, if you would have held, you would have got to, you know, a dollar four further. And given that this range here is 25 cents, plus my stop, plus my entry makes it 35 cents. Whatever this move is divided by 35 cents, that's where we're sitting. So, monster days, you gotta have them. Um, if we just go to April real quick, I'll give you just a, a quick example. Let me go back 30 days, and let me just show you what I'm talking about. So, all right, so here's April 1st. April 1st <clears throat> obviously looks like, this is weird, this was a strange day. Um, I probably wouldn't have traded this day because of that wick. So we'll come to the next day. Here's a day where you would have gotten short here. This would have, the range of this candle would have been your 1R. Um, it would have gone, likely gone 1R, come back, not stopped you out, and then dropped a little. So this would have been a small profitable day. Um, in here would have been a loser. This one would have been a 1R move to break even, followed by a rejection and a stop out, so a scratch. Here, this would have been a 1R move, a move to break even, a rejection for a scratch. In here, this one looks like it might have been a 1R and a scratch. And then here we are. We're on April 12th, and here's a monster. Here's your range. Let's draw the lines real quick, just so I can show you this one. So the high on this one was 82.44, so 82.49. So right here, that's the stop. The low on this is 82.05, so 82 would be the entry right there. So you would have gotten short at that white line, it would have dropped, 1R would have been, you know, right in here. So you would have moved to break even, but you can see the break even was never challenged. It got close, but not quite. And then it rolled over and you would have closed it down here at 78.62. So let's do the math on this one real quick. So the low on this is 82.05 minus 5 cents, so it would have entered at 82. And the closing print would have been 78.62. So that's $3.38. And the range of this candle was 39 cents. And then if I add my stop and my entry, that makes it 49 cents. So I'll divide by 49. So this is a basically a 6.9 R day times 300. So for me, this would have been a almost a $2,100 day. So you can see where, you know, when I do lose, I lose 300, but on this day, I made 2,100. So that's why it's so crucial to catch these monsters. And if you're trading differently, like what if, like on this day, I, you know, I, if I was trading differently, you could have missed it. Or what if you were, um, you know, moving to one, you know, you just didn't have your parameters set. You just got to make sure things are the same every single day or else you'll miss something. It's the most important thing is just the consistency piece. So. Um, as we come through April, you can see another loser, 
Um, we come in here. It looks like this would have been a 1R, and then it trailed out for a nice, you know, a little smaller winner for the day. This one you wouldn't have been triggered. Um, this one would have been um, probably a not a monster, but a pretty good day because you would have gotten break-even move based on this candle, and then it bottomed out and sort of finished pretty low. So a pretty good profitable day there. Um, this would have been a loser. This one, this one could have been a loser. I'm guessing it was, um, unless it popped up first and then dropped. But I'm guessing this was a loser. If this one would have worked, this would have been, um, this would have been a nice, a nice monster. And part of me gets weird when the candle is only 11 cents when it's really tiny. So this would have only been a 21 cent range. It's just tight. So. Um, if I follow the plan though, I use that last candle, that probably would have been a loser. This one I don't think would have gotten triggered because the low is 91, so 86, and the low here is 86. So this may have triggered, may not have triggered. It may have just whipped down and not gotten entered. And then here we are, April 22nd, you've got this 40 cent, so 50 cent range. Big move from 81.50 down to roughly 79, so $2.50, so this was a five plus R move. Another monster, perfect. No trigger here, um, loser here. Um, no, this would have been a one R move to break even with a scratch. And then that would have been a loser. And then welcome to Monsterville, look at this one. Big, big move, this range is 59 cents, so 69 cents, but just a huge move and finished on the lows. This is a this makes part of your month right there. It's so important. And then uh, a loser there, and then a loser there, and then you're done. And then you start off May with a monster. So the key is finding, you know, if you can get two monsters in a month, that's perfect. Some months, like we just went through, have three or four. So the most important thing is just to stick to that trade plan no matter what. And don't let anything in the trade plan be subjective. So I'm going to read through my six steps one more time so you've got it clear. And then drop comments below or hit me up on Slack if you have questions. But um, trade plan, uh, number one, enter the short five cents below the low of the final 15-minute candle in the pre-market. Step two, place the stop loss five cents above the high of the last 15-minute candle in the pre-market. Step three, once the trade moves 1R, move the stop to break even and don't move it prior to that. Step four, let the trade run for the remainder of the day. Step five is an exception. You can take a quarter profit off your position if the trade moves 3R or more. Then the remainder runs for the rest of the day. And step six, do this for 30 consecutive days without wavering. So that's the trade plan recap. I hope that helps. If you have questions, please let me know. And Shahid, thank you for requesting the video. All right, we'll see you in the next one.